Hi, this is Tim. Let's talk about the three most popular instructions that you're going to run into when working with Allen Bradley PLCs. The examine on, examine off, and output energize. Note this is an excerpt from a live stream, so it is not perfect. But all right, we're going to be working over here in Studio 5000. We're just going to run through some basic instructions. And yeah, any questions that come up while we do, feel free to throw them down in the chat. But we're going to create a new program. So I'm going to go File New. And the next thing we need to know is which PLC we have. And this is a 1769L16ERBB1B. And again, I mean, I can't stress to you enough, make your program files names memorable and your program or your controller names memorable. So I am just going to know, uh, yeah, in this case, I, this is a live stream oh, 928. I guess that is kind of what it is. And so I'm going to click next. And then for the L16 or the point .io ones, you actually have to tell it how much expansion I/O it has. And it will fault the controller if you don't. And yeah, if you want to learn about controller faults, let me know in the chat. And yeah, I'll go ahead and fault this controller and we can see it. But uh, so that is the number of modules to the right of the PLC. So this is our base PLC. And then we have this and this. So that is two expansion modules. So we're going to put in a two there. And we'll hit the finish button. All right. Oops. Okay, UB, and we're actually getting really close to your tag type, um, explaining tag types and alias things now. Because, all right, so this is the way it comes up when you open it. And the one thing that a lot of people get lost on right away is when we open up like RS Logics 500 or something. In fact, let me do that. Let's see, was well, this something? Yeah, we uploaded this. This is kind of the way it comes up. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, I can understand this. Here's my... um. Yeah, here are my instructions, so I just need to start dragging things down. This is this is pretty easy. And we get over here to Studio 5000, and it's like, where's my stuff? And what I always tell everybody is you can kind of follow down task and just keep hitting the arrows into it, and eventually you're going to find the main program. And so this is the program that is going to be ran by default. And so a little just really quick spill about task is we have a continuous task and that thing runs as fast as it can. It's not particularly timely. It's not a high priority even, but it, as soon as it's done running, it goes and tries to run again. And then inside of it, we have programs and mainly inside of it, we have routines and we're only going to run the main routine. We'll have to use JSRs and things like that to do the others. But all right, so we're going to bring down, in fact, let's, you know, this is a good idea. Let's do this in both RS Logix 500 and connected component, I mean, and Studio 5000 at the same time. So I'm going to bring down, oh, we already have it on down. So over here, what did it even do? Okay, I drug down and examine on, and I drug down and output energize. And so over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag down and examine on, and I'm going to drag down and output energize. And the next thing we need to do is we need to find out what addresses we're going to use. So what I'm going to do on this is we do have our Monday morning um, push button station on it. And it has input 0 through 7. So you can see here, hopefully you can see the lights. Yeah, you can kind of see them. That's input 0. Yeah, on down through there. And what I'm going to do is make it when we turn on input 0 here, that output 0 turns on on the PLC. So fairly basic, but it will get us through a lot of our tag obstacles. So in this case, actually let's start in 500 because a lot of you are familiar with it. And also even laid out over here, we have outputs, we have inputs, and we got a bunch of other things that maybe we do or don't know about. But if we go into here on our inputs, then this top one right here, I colon zero backslash zero is input zero. And even from here, I can just drag that right there and bam, we're done. And we can do the same thing on the outputs. You can drag output zero right into here and we're done. So 
<laughs> really, besides the fact that, yeah, we definitely need descriptions, we're going to verify this project and it's ready to go. And we are going to add descriptions because the biggest thing I see people do when they start out is they're like, um, I'll remember it. That's input zero. Yeah, that's the top switch. I'll put zero. Yeah, I got that. But then as our program starts growing, all of a sudden there comes a point where you're like, oh, my brain can't hold anymore. I'm done. And so right away, before we do anything, we're going to add a description to this. And I am going to call this switch one. And then typically I would wire this to light one. Now I did not wire the outputs on this. I probably should have, but, and yeah, if we get really, if we get really in the weeds with something, we might, we might add some wiring to this, but um, we, we did the wiring at a live stream a few times ago. But I'm going to go ahead and call this light one. Just mainly that way I have description on it. UV. What is the difference between Studio 5030 and 32? Uh, you know, I don't know any major differences between them. Obviously, you could look at the um, revision notes and probably figure some of that out. Um, I think there might be a few new processors in 32. That's the biggest thing I can think of. Uh, there also is version 33 out now. Now, I'm not really excited about... I'm downloading the latest version, so we, um, yeah, I probably won't do that. I don't know a lot about it, but okay. Let's see. Would a one shot be another means of programming alternately lag pump in the previous video? Didn't I use that one shot? I'm pretty sure I used a one shot. Um, let me just, yeah, let's keep going. We're going, I'll open up another version and get that open and we'll, yeah, we can talk about the one shot a little bit. But okay, so over here, it was pretty easy. We were able to figure out, oh yeah, there's our inputs, there's our outputs, drag some things down, we're ready to download. Studio 5000 is a little different because, well, one, obviously you don't see your inputs and outputs laid out really well there, but we do see this IO configuration down here. And the trick to this is while the input and output works great, if the I.O. is right there, when you got into like data highways and all these other networks in 500 and everything, it became nightmarish because you couldn't figure out whether an output was on this PLC or whether it was shooting over device net going here or what was going on. So while it's really complicated to figure out where your first input and your first output are in the compact logics because of the tag addressing, it is insanely easy to look at a tag address and figure out where it is. So let's walk through a little of that. As far as we see here, we've got IO, we've got point IO, and that's gonna be right on our PLC. And it says embedded. And we're going to have our embedded discrete IO, and it has a one right here. And so what this means, and one thing I do wish they would put somewhere in here, and I don't even know where it would be. I wish they would put identify something here as local. But if you see the word local, then that means that it's going to be physically on our PLC. And so, yeah, let's look at our controller tags and see if we can work that out. So first, all things are in our controller tags. And so we're going to open it up. And we have a local one. And that's all we have right now. And that's because that's all I've configured in this program. So we have C, and that's going to be our configuration. And for this live stream, I think we probably could say that typically you won't need that. And then we have I and we have O. So I is for input, O is for output. Now, one thing we haven't actually addressed is what is an input and what is an output? Because, you know, those are two terms that we kind of throw around like everybody ought to know too. An input is something that we are going to look at, that we're gonna read. Like my eyes are looking at something, I'm getting input from this screen. An output is something that we are gonna tell something to do. So I hit this key right here, it's gonna do something, or we hope it will. So our outputs are gonna get a lights, they're gonna get a contactors, they're gonna go to things that we wanna make the machine do things with. And our inputs, we're going to sense things about the machine, its state, its position, things like that. All right, let me catch up a little bit on chat here. Let's see, I'm glad you love our channel. Let's see, we hit version 30 and 32. All right, I'm gonna bring the one shot thing up. What is the 
full 1766 is it a tag oh warren that's actually a great question and it's back here in studio 5000 um this is something they added that really kind of start trying to help us um navigate some of these craters of <laughs> as we were adding io actually this is to help us with this whole tag thing is 1766 that is this plc so if we look at the micro plc i i turned autofocus off you're not going to be able to read it because it drives me insane where it focuses and unfocused but this is a 1766 l32 bwa so what that's saying is hey this is a 1766 plc that's what this io is on and if i go here and yeah let's just add something here again here i go doing it on the fly i hope this works and um we're just going to add a an ia8 here that's going to be the second one let me grab a drink of water here all right so i just put that in slot one so you notice this is zero right here this is o colon zero slash zero so that means this is the output and it's in zero, which is the base of the PLC, and it's output zero. So now, let me just add a branch. Actually, no, let me make another rung because I'm going to delete this out. Let's add another rung down, and we're going to put an output in. Was it an IA8? No, that was an IA8. So we want an input. And now let's just start typing I colon, but this time I'm going to put one, and I'm going to hit enter. Don't worry about a description on that. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this down. Drag that over here. And now I'm going to hit the verify button. And so now this one says 1762IA. So that tells me what module this input is connected to. So that's what that means, Warren. Hope that helps that out. Okay, let's see. Where are we at? Leland. Leland, let me uh, let me get back to you as um on that one shot. But okay, I'm gonna delete this back out. Warren, let me know if that um doesn't clear up that. And let's go back over here. So all right, we have our tags here, and so now we have input. We figured that out, and we know we have 16 inputs on this PLC. So we have fault and we have data. So data is the actual input data. I don't know how to state that without using the word data. You got anything for me, Amber? No. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Yeah. Okay. And so then we have 0 through 15. And so these are the physical inputs. And in fact, no, let's go ahead and get through this and then we'll download this and look at a few things. But all right. Over here, we want this to be input number one, the same as we we're over there. So we want to, you know, we, we think we need that crazy local thing. Well, if you'll double click here, you actually get a drop down and if we click it then we can navigate through here and so we have local and then we know it's one colon i i'm going to open that up and then we're going to have data and yeah there's point number zero this is going to be input zero now again we're going to put a description on that and one thing i love about studio 5000 because i'll probably use these for the rest of it is you know we right click we get lots of options what so i tell everybody all the time if you're not sure how to do something right click and see what options come up and we're going to edit the main operating description. But Studio 5000, every time there is a shortcut code, they put it right here. So from now on, I can just hit Control D and do a, do a description. And so this is going to be switch one. And then we're going to need an output. Oops, I already had an output. And this is going to be, oops, I don't know. See, there I go shortcutting because I know, you know, and it, I almost never use these drop downs, but they're great when you're trying to find it and start out. But you notice we can click here and we can navigate through this one. But also, okay, we know it's local. Let me get that back out of there. So instead of using that drop down, I can hit the L for local and then O. And notice it starts filling everything in. Now I want local colon one colon O. So I can backspace and hit O. And then I can hit the dot, and I'm going to get what options are. So we have data dot zero. So this is going to be output zero. And while I didn't wire it to a light, I am going to hit control D, and then I'm going to put light one. All right, so this is really basic. 
And we're going to actually, let's add a second one because we're going to go over the three basic instructions. So we're going to add another wrong. Actually, no, let's just make this real easy. We're going to copy and paste because we're lazy. We don't like to do a lot of work. And in this case, I want this second instruction here. So I'm going to drop that down. And I don't want to type all this again. So I can click this address because this is what I want to look at. I can drag it right there. There you go. Without typing anything, I have that instruction now. And then here, we're going to look at output number one. We're going to turn output number one on. And so this is, and honestly, this is the basic instructions that probably make up, I don't know, 50, 60, 60% of all programs. So now I am going to download this, and I'm going to go step by step through downloading, because usually here's where I tell you, if you, <laughs> if you need any help with it, just go look at the rest of our lessons. So we're going to go to communications, and I don't care that this who active, I mean, this download button's here. In fact, here's a good example. I'm going to hit download. And we're going to get this failed to communications. And it does say communications path needed, but it doesn't clearly tell you that. And that's why I always like going to communications who active. Because this is going to let me set my path. And I still have my button options here. And then I'm going to navigate to my PLC, which is on Ethernet. And... We are going to use this one right here that right now is 161 and it's Monday blank. So I'm going to download this. And we are going to pay attention to this prompt when I hit this. I'm going to hit the download button. And again, I can't stress enough. I know there's a lot of words on this page, but really download offline project live stream 928 to the controller. And it tells you this controller right now is called Monday blank. So make sure you know that this is what you want to do. Because but once we overwrite Monday blank that's in this PLC, there is no turning back. So I'm going to hit the download button. We're going to get there, Yubi. So let me hit through a couple basic things here. Okay. So now, the, here is a basic PLC program. And I don't know, you know, I should have thought about the screen focus. Probably should have wired a couple of lights. But yeah, you probably can kind of see. Output 1's on right now. And I switch input 0. Yeah, and you can see that. You can see the lights kind of changing. Don't worry, we're going to go through them on the screen here. But all right. This right here, and you know, I hear so many things for this. And I mean, if you come into my class and you call this a normally open... I do scream at you usually, and this is not a normally closed. If you'll call them anything but that, I'm usually pretty happy. But normally open and normally closed are electrical terms. They are not programming terms. And so what I always say on this is this instruction, which is this shape right here, goes and looks for a 1. Does it have 1? Well, if we mouse over, we can put a quick value. No, it has a 0. So this one is false. It's going to pass false conditions on to this output energize. And a false output energize does something. Don't tell me it does nothing. A false energize goes right to zero. Where to? Output zero. And then this instruction that looks terribly like a normally closed, it's a go look for a zero. Where at? At this local blah, blah, blah thing, which we've already determined is input zero. Does it have one? Yes. Yeah. So it's true. And while we're, we'll talk in some other videos about that the green on the screen is not always true, but it is represented there as true. And then this is going to be true, and a true output energized goes and writes a 1. So right now, output 0 is off, output 1 is on. I switch on output 1, and I'm sorry, input 0, do that again. I switch on input 0, and now this top rung is true. It's going to write a one to output zero, and now output one is off. Now we have lots of videos on this, and I, I, we can come back and talk about this more. I'm gonna hit UV thing because this is a little bit confusing. Click here for our free Allen Bradley PLC lessons. Till next time.